thank you, Jack. Appreciate that. Uh, one thing we thought we would do is is give Lori uh, a few minutes. If anybody here doesn't know Lori, Paul is our finance director, does an excellent job and uh, helped uh, help lead the charge for refinancing has helped save the county a lot of money. Uh, we asked Lori if she would to give us a mid-year financial review. This sort of uh, lets us know where we are and uh, give a little insight into the uh, our finances. So, Lori, we'll turn it over to you. You say that like you're offended. You say that like you're offended that you're accused of being the press. Oh, no, no. Okay. So, um, we have completed, of course, six months of our fiscal year, so I'm just going to give you an update on where we are with revenues. Highlight our major revenue, which are our more or property tax and motor vehicle tax revenues, our sales tax revenues, where we are on expenditures, and a look ahead at our debt service for future years. Um, this first, we are revenues. This compares fiscal year 12 with current fiscal year. Um, as you can see, last year at this time, we were about 27.9 million or 62% of the budget. This year, we're at 28.2 or 60% of budget. So we're right on target with where we were last year. So, um, you know, revenues are coming in as projected. So that's you know, that's always a positive. Laura, I think it's important to point out here, uh, maybe especially for Paul's view, uh, the budget was about $50 million five years ago. And so over the past five years, the county has decreased it. And over the past two budget cycles that I've been on the board, we've Decrease the budget. It's now in the neighborhood of 46 or 47, um, and that was, uh, that's been done through a number of things, including uh, not hiring back. We have a smaller number of employees. Jack, I think about 30, 30 less employees than we did five years ago, and uh, sort of combined some jobs and responsibilities. And, uh, I think our finance folks, not only Lori, but I think uh, before her, Evelyn has done a good job working with this board to uh, to reduce our budget uh, somewhat. So anyway, sorry Lord. Can you mention that while that slide was there? Okay. So let's take a look at our property tax and motor vehicle tax revenues. Again, this is comparing last fiscal year to this fiscal year. Last year we were at twenty point three million. This year we're at twenty point six million. So uh, we're a little ahead of the game, so that's always a good thing. So again, there, even with the you know recession and the economy being what it is, uh, we've been pretty fortunate on the you know, property tax and motor vehicle tax collections. Um, what last year percentage collection was? Um, some of y'all might. Yeah, 96.38 was our last year. That is uh, motor vehicles and property combined, 96.38%. And again, of course, we'd all like it to be at 100%, but uh, so given the recession and the state of the economy, um, you know, I think that's, that's a great percentage. And like I said, just looking at the dollars this year compared to last year, you know, we're, we're actually a little ahead of the game. I'd like to just make one mention one thing while we're on that particular sheet is that there is a, a law that goes in effect where a beginning, suppose I think it's July this year, when you renew your license fee, whether you pay your property tax and debt fine, and that goes into effect when it's supposed to, our collection percentages will go higher on our property bills. That's really what pulls us down on our overall collection is this tax and collection on property bills goes. Way it works now if you buy a car and get your tag renewed, three months later you get a tax bill. And if you don't pay it, uh, when it comes time to renew your tag, I tag another year from then, then uh, uh, if you still have to pay it, you put a block on it. This is a very cumbersome thing, it doesn't work that well anyway. So most of the states uh, around us, when you purchase your annual license plate, they collect the property tax if you have that on your vehicle at time when that goes into effect. You can see our tax collection uh, rate, overall rate, go up some. They do it the way it's supposed to be done. 
since Richard's come in, one question I have to read through there <clears throat> that I, I was unclear of. Uh, is it going to be like our sales tax? Is it going to go to the state and then revert back to the county? I'm going to ask Richard. I'm not, I'm not sure how that detail works. The state's going to collect the, uh, you get your tag, Richard. The state's going to collect the uh, property tax and uh, uh, they'll It'll be, uh, it'll be on your uh, registration card, what county kind of residence you have. I'm not sure the procedure that they'll use to get that money collected in back to a particular county. I'm sure they'll take a percent of that for administrative leave, but the rest of it will come back to the county and to the best families in which they're going to receive Yeah, um, the county still will have to do the uh, same thing they're doing now. The difference becomes we won't send the information to a third party to bill and it will be collected at the point of receiving your tag. Uh, right now the county throughout the state averages about 85 percent collection on tag vehicles. This will go up to 100 because if you don't um, pay your tax you won't drive your vehicle. So uh, well, we will have to pay the cost. Right now average statewide it's running up to seven dollars to bill for a tag counting all the administrative costs um, the building the mailing and all that and with the uh, larger number being done at once done at once it's going to drop to about two dollars a cost so there is a well, the question is how much of the state going to hold back are they going to be like to do the state taxes um no it's not going it's our money We'll have to pay something like I said right now it's costing seven, it's dropping to two, and that's counting administration fees. So it's passed through the state, back. it passes back. through the state. They, they never pass through, they keep a little. Well, they'll keep a part of the administrative, but the um, <coughs> larger scale is dropping the price, so it's going down. Our, our true cost is about six dollars a bill, and it's going to drop down to an average of two dollars. So we should see it. But our sales tax is likely to got three months. So. I think, isn't the motor vehicle supposed to be just a 30 day lag? Yeah. Richard, I believe it. Yeah, and right now, so you, well, it won't even be 30 day. Right now, you've got a four month lag in your billing because you go get your tag today, it's four months before the county can bill you. Now, you go get your tag, the county will get the money <coughs> in 30 days. Good. Lord, go ahead. Yeah. Thank you. Um, the next slide shows our sales tax. Uh, like like Ronnie was saying, we have a 90-day lag. This slide only represents July, August, September, and October retail sales. Because the retail sales that were made in October, we actually don't receive those funds until January. So I can only show you four months of data because that's all we receive in current fiscal year. So, as you can see, though, comparing the last four months, uh, last fiscal year versus this, we are up 3.26%. <coughs> so that's a positive indicator. And uh, another positive thing, of course, is we haven't, you know, received our tax yet for November and December retail sales, which are typically, of course, your higher months because people are shopping for Christmas. So um, we have a, you know, this is a positive thing. So. Hopefully, of course, this trend will continue, but again, it's kind of early on. We've only received four months, but I would say definitely with the November, December, you know, again, with those being your, your better months of retail sales, that, um, you know, our sales tax should come in over budget from what we projected. <clears throat> we've talked a little bit about revenues, so of course, the other side of the coin are your expenditures, you know. How are we doing there? Um, last year at this time we were at 20.2 million. This year we're 18.5. Um, but uh, in the month of January, I will be transferring two million dollars over to the debt service fund. That transfer was made in December last year, so it's not reflected here. So if you add the two million, there would, then would be at 20.6 million versus 20.2. And of course, we've got a lot of things you know going on this year that we did last year. The start of the full renovations, the full house renovations, etc. Uh, but with that being said, you know, we're still on track with uh, expenditures. You know, we're, we're not close to that, you know, you think six months of the year you'd be at 50% or, you know, of course, some things vary, but uh, 
even with adding the two million in, you know, you'd probably be up to probably around 42, 43 percent. So uh, we're holding the line on expenditures, you know, and of course we try to monitor that and encourage our departments to do all they can, you know, to, um, to try to understand the budgets. And, and, they, then, and they've done an excellent job of that, by the way. They have. Last couple of years uh, have actually come in yeah. under, yes. under the budget, which is, which is a, a model that uh, maybe some other things should do. Commissioner Trump, one thing we not talked about, and that <coughs> Commissioner Higgins is probably not aware of, but the county manager instituted a central purchasing agent for the county. And uh, it's a one woman department, but I don't know how we could figure, we can go back and look, but his has made a substantial difference when all these departments have to go through one person. It's her job to get the best price at a good at quantity right. or volume. Call resident each department order their own stuff and, and different prices. This way you can have a, 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 a sort of low, low price guarantee on, on your purchasing. So that would be the thing. Yeah, it's a lot easier to manage going through one separate portal and then before, before we institute our own purchasing agent mm -hmm. the system here. Every department was responsible for their own person out there. They don't pay for the money, but uh, we scrutinize that. And anything over a certain amount comes back to my office. We just sign off on before they, before they do it. So I think we've got a pretty good, pretty good handle on the whole marriage. That's why we've been able to, one reason why we've been able to hold our expenditures now, I think, because we've got a little better internal control of those expenditures. Just a couple more checks and balances, if you would. Lori, go ahead. Okay. The final slide I have is just talk about our debt for the upcoming fiscal year and future years. Like Jack had mentioned earlier, um, in the past few months, we have modified three loans. Uh, one loan had a balance to two point, I was around to 2.2 million. We went from a rate of 369 down to 249. That saved us about $116,000 over the life of the loan. The second one we modified um, had a principal balance of $3 million. Uh, we modified that from a three forty eight to a two nineteen, saving us about $141,000 over the life of the loan. And then, of course, the last one that we most recently modified uh, had a principal balance of $16 million. We went from a rate of 4.59% to 2.61%. And that is saving us close to $2.5 million over the life of the loan. And, Lori, the media did a good job of... of uh, reporting that, but I think it's important to point out that we were able to do that um, through the board's direction and through Lori's doing this. And, and she, I can't speak enough to what a good job she did. <coughs> did to where these, these loans are not, there's no prepayment penalty, so we're going to pay them off early. There's no prepayment penalty. There's no, there were no fees typically, and by the were points charged. And the last one uh, was the loan the county had taken out back in 2008 which was on, uh, uh, I guess that was on the Intermediate School in the Summit East Franklin. Yeah. And basically what we did was threaten to, threaten to go to the bond market and get a better deal, and, and uh, all of a sudden the bank came back and said, how about if we, and they gave us a rate better than the bond market was, was offering even at the time. Without the issue of its cost. Without us, without us yeah. having to go to the cost and expense, the time of doing that, so they basically just lowered the rate. And so it saved us the 2.4 million, which was good. Right. Good. So cool. all three loans combined uh, to save the county $2.7 million over the life of those loans. Um, so just looking at this slide, as you can see, like, again, this, these are our payments for the upcoming budget. We're right at $6 million for fiscal year 13-14. And keep in mind that our principal and interest. <coughs> And of course, you can see our debt declines over the next several years. The big drop between 14 and 15 is your COPS. The, um, you have one more large payment in 14. The certificates of participation, not police. Yeah, the certificates of participation, sorry, uh, which was issued back in 2004, which is where the county took several small debt, debt, debt issues, rolled them into one lump, went to the bond market, issued certificates of participation, and got a better interest rate. Um, so that's the big decrease from 14 to 15 is your, your cops is almost paid off. I would just like to point out here that um, you can look at our debt in, in a few different ways and the local government commission actually looks for this and you have to do this analysis every year. Um, there's a thing, it's 
they call it the legal debt margin, and that just means that as a county, we can technically, and you never want to do this, but we can borrow up to 8% of our assessed valuation. Well, Macon County's number for this fiscal year is be 12. We could have technically had a debt limit of 743 million. And again, you'd never want to get even close to the 8%. But just to throw this out there, um, our legal debt limit, our, so again, 8% is our max, 743 million. Currently, Macon County is at 0.42%. So again, that's not even a half a percent. Because our principal, what, and you just look at the principal amount only, our principal amount is 38.6 million. And again, that's 0.42 percent, you know, or less than one half of one percent of what we can legally borrow. And the average for our population group for counties is at like 0.65. Uh, that's the latest data I can see uh, on the uh, local government commission website. So just like to throw that out there as a point. Uh, another way that sometimes debt is looked at is to take your principal balance and compare it as a percentage of your budget plus those principal payments. Um, ours is around 9%. So, those are just some of the tidbits for the That's all I have unless you gentlemen um, have any questions specifically to debt or any other items we've discussed. I just want to say, Mr. Manager, along with listening to into what the chairman said, the job role here uh, in Douglas. Uh, it would be, uh, I think, safe to say that when Evelyn left, we were all, you know, pretty nervous because Evelyn coached most of us and taught us how to read budgets. But, Lori, we're just, uh, we're proud to be here and thank you for the job you're doing. I mean, it's, uh, uh, we're, we're blessed. We're blessed you're here. And we suggested that we take a look at that uh, last loan we did. Lori went to work and I, said, I told somebody hey, I'd hate to be up against her in negotiations because they just started. Well, you got Lewis Lloyd calling you. Yeah. You know you made it. If you don't know who that is, he's the fellow we've been with him since I've known him for the BB&T bank. And when he, uh, uh, when he's anxious to meet with you, that's a good thing. Yeah. So, yeah. Probably BB&T does the majority of